Hello again and welcome back. We are finally going to study object-oriented programming. If you are new to object-oriented programming, you're in luck because Python's vision of object-oriented programming is the simplest and makes the most sense. We'll see. There is nothing extra. I like to start by reminding you that you know about namespaces. When you do a dir on math, you get all the attributes that are available to you in that math module namespace. Every module is a namespace. Every string is a namespace. Every function is a namespace. Every integer. So what you're going to be doing is making a pattern for your own namespaces. And those are going to be our own classes so that we can make patterns for objects that are exactly what we want them to be. We might make a person and inside that person will be all the knowledge that a person should have. It'll have its own memory. It'll be able to speak. It'll be able to dance and kiss and play music. Okay, and so what we're going to be needing to be doing is emulating nature. We got to keep that in mind all the time when we're creating objects. You think about what this object can do, and we're going to put that functionality inside our classes. To start, I always like to look at First of all, let's take a look at a little video give you an idea of what we're talking about. Going back to our material, we see that we have the classic diagram of what object-oriented programming is. There is a class. That's a keyword in Python. And what it means is that it's a cookie cutter or a blueprint from this, we make many trees. The tree class makes many objects of the tree class. We are instantiating objects. So that is an important word to you, instantiate. I like this definition of object-oriented programming. A class is a blueprint for a namespace, and a namespace is an object constructed from the blueprint. That's all we have. Let's look at our syntax. Starting with reader1def.py. Let's first look at our main, or at least line 14, and this is the instantiation step. Greeter is the name of our class. I add some parens and what comes back there is an object of the greeter class. Let's look at our greeter class definition. We start with our keyword class, greeter. Greeter is capitalized because it can take parens. It's a callable. In our style guide, all callables are capitalized. Class names are different from identifiers for functions because identifiers for functions start with verbs. And here we have nouns. It's a very instructive style guide. When you look at an identifier, you know what sort of object you're looking at. Okay, class, greeter, colon. Then the indented part is the definition of the greeter class. We see in this very simple class, we only have one thing inside our class definition, and that is a method. A method is just like a function, except it's in the object-oriented sense. It only works for objects of this class. And which object of the class? That's that self. We're going to be looking at that. Okay, so all that happens after I make an object of my greeter class is I'm going to call Fred Greet. And that pushes the interpreter into Fred's class, finds the method greet, and runs it. I say Fred.greet. But what the interpreter really does is say greeter.greet Fred. It is the interpreter that puts Fred in as the argument. 
you must put that self so that there is a place for the interpreter to do that, to put Fred in. And now we know it was Fred who called greet. We're making another one, Alma. And then she's greeting. My intention was to show you that we have three different name spaces. And I don't know if this really shows that, but I leave it in the material because I enjoy it. Okay, we're going to print string value. Fred equals Fred. Um, well, that looks like nonsense, but that happens a lot in Python, and it is not nonsense. Because remember, several things. One is that keyworded arguments going into print string value where there's a double asterisk waiting will get gathered up as a dictionary. And each of the left sides here will become strings that will be keys in the dictionary. Now, the right side, which was evaluated first, the right side then is upon the object, Fred, that came down on line 14. So we are having in our dictionary the string version, Fred, and his value then is his object. And all I am doing here is I'm printing them out. For each of the strings in my dict version, which is keys, I'm going to print that, Fred, then a colon. And here I'm ending with just a space so that I can say dict version of that namespace string, and I see the object. And here we see the string was greeter, and we're seeing that it is a class in our main module, greeter. That's all that is known about it. Alma and Fred are both objects at different addresses. So I'm trying to show you that there are three different namespaces here, and there are. Okay, that's our first class. We're going to be a little more complicated this time. We have a greeter class again, and we're going to have two methods in our greeter class, set name and greet. Let's look down in our main, and we're making a greeter. So a box of names comes down, and what comes to us is a greeter object. And in that object, there are two names in that name space. Set name and greet. Nothing more. So when we say Gracie.greet, Gracie goes in here and she says, hello world, I'm... that crashes because there is no name in the self. And so she just says hello world. But now we'll say Gracie set name. We go in here, name in is upon that Gracie string. And this is the action of putting into the Gracie's namespace the identifier name with the dot, and it will be Gracie. So the next time Gracie greets, she has her name Gracie. George, we set his name right away because we know we want to greet if you have a greeter. And we see his name, George. Now, if you are a seasoned object-oriented programmer, and maybe if you give it a thought anyway, you realize, well, gee, every time you make a greeter, you want immediately to give that greeter a name. You can do that in the magic init method. Looking at our third greeter definition, on line 8, this is our magic init method. If you provide for your class a magic init, then on instantiation step, you can send in any arguments that you would like to have received at initialization and do with them what you wish. So all my greeters now will have a name. They will each have a badge. Well, let's look at our code. So here we are instantiating a Fred object, and we're printing what we're going to get when we say Fred greet. And we see, hello world, I'm Fred. If I try to make a greeter without putting in that name, then I get an error. 
the name must be there. And remember, I didn't say self, but this is the developing object, the developing namespace and the magic initializer. Here's our, our error that you get. You get a type error and that my initializer is missing one required positional argument name. Give that little bit a try with a stack class. See you soon.